this, yeah. As the Probably. elders would say in the days, I feel all right. I have no burden, no pain that's, that is insurmountable. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Yeshua is my burden bearer. Yes. Yeah. I shall learn of him and take the yoke of righteousness. We are born yoked by righteousness and no other way. We greet you all in Yeshua's excellent, most prominent and powerful name given unto man. We are the nation of his elect, that he has called us and set us apart and to be a people that special unto him. And he loves our fellowship. And so he poured his ruach in the midst of the Shabbat. This is his day of rest. He has not changed that format. He still rests. And he rests in the jubilation of praises and offerings of Todah among his nation on the Shabbat. And so we gather two, three, four, five, and there he sits himself in the midst of us to say, It's all right, it's well. I'm here. You don't have to get a feeling, you just sing with delight. You don't need a rush. You just simply run on to see what the end shall be. You don't need a certain jittering step. We step out by Imuna with great confidence in Almighty Yah. When he reveals the power of this earthen body, of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we can see the reality and the visibility of him, not in some empty space, my friend, appearing beyond the elements that we see, but what we see in one another, you will know, you will understand. And until we eclipse to that pinnacle, we will be a people that have only one cessation of joy and it is induced by a false paradigm of the world and so we go about establishing our philosophical ideas our thoughts and our concepts of life and it's wrong it's wrong we simply do not really know him we don't know his attitude we don't know his love. And we certainly do not know his judgment. We don't know him. We know him in this foray of our minds of what is accepted by us. But it is wrong. As I say to us often, often we greet you, our friends, our listeners. And my enemies, we certainly greet you as well. Because we give you the lechem, the bread. We give you the manna, the manna. What is this bread that this man will speak? I'm not going to prolong the time. I want to read a few verses before our zakhain, that we comes. Then our zakhain, Yaramaya, will close out the service after him. I want to read a comment, a letter that we received this week. The person says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am locked in now. It took me a minute. There was a great delay. It took me a minute to digest your presentation. Didn't like it. Didn't care for it. Did not like the way you talk. But as I began to listen, I began to become locked in. Then he says, but the content, but the content, the measure, the elements is undeniably, you can't deny it. It is the ruach of imat, it is the spirit of truth. It is amazing that this generation 
because I say damn and hell they get perturbed with that they can sit and watch their wicked grandmammy their mammy use terms that they call vulgar and they will never straighten them out and you're not going to straighten me out you can forget that period and so it's somewhat undigestible because it cuts down to the belly and the root of a man's heart and reveal the stench of his nature that he is a vile wretched undone thing it's not the words that i use it's the sin and the hatred toward yah they are against him and they are not for him they are against him and they are not for him because they are the oye give me 15 minutes my friend and they are the oye they are the enemies of Yah. they hate him and an enemy does all he she can to dethrone to make mockery to kill it is a covert assault so in the midst of their conclaves of darkness they speak against what Yah has ordained because they have one passion and one passion alone i want to read a few scriptures before zakhin comes this is what was induced into my love this morning i will read it and if you have any kind of connection with Torah, you will know where I'm reading from. And you will know whether it's right or wrong. The great Shulish Ach, he speaks unto the nation. He calls us, you adulterous. You are the Na'af. You are those that, through the practice of your idolatry and your ways that denounce Yah. You have joined yourself to every kind of unclean thing. You go into their vile practices. And you don't give a damn about Yah. That's what you do. He calls us adulterers. Then he also says to the daughters, you adulterers. You unfaithful. You don't give a damn about me. You don't love me. And you do not care. Adulterers. An adulteress is either the book is a lie or it is all truth. He says, do you not, Yada, have you not experienced, do you not understand that the friendship, the ra'a, that that is your component of strength. You get great delight from this world that the friendship of the world uh, that you love to be in their company they are special to you more special than the people of Yah you have a great uncandid ability to 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 fellowship and, and the mockery of Yah this is what the book says you can get upset with me it makes me no different we got to get everything lined up with the book everything has to be according to the book he said don't you all Yada have you not experienced that the friendship of the world he says, don't you know that this is Abba? Abba, don't you know that this is enmity? Don't you know that there is such a compassion of your hatred? That you will do anything to kill me? You will impale your shoe over and over. You despise him. You reject what he stands for. I'm not talking. This is uh, your Kahana. And this is Yaakov speaking here. These are not my words. Don't you understand that you relish the friendship of the world? You love their activities, but yet you don't love the activities of Yah. You got time for the world, but no time that you embrace the world, their activities. He said, don't you understand that the friendship of the world is enmity against Yah? And you know what's in the world. Nobi Yachahan said, all there be that is in the world, not some. He talked about the whole system of the world it is nothing but the lust of your flesh it is the lust of your eyes it is the pride 
of life. And these things are not of O Maria. Don't you know that the friendship and your love for the world is enmity? It is the hatred of an enemy to O Maria. He says, whosoever, whosoever will be a friend of the world. He says, you are my enemy. That's flat out. I didn't say it. The Most High said it. That's why he warns us against this adulterous and adulterous generation. They play with the feminality of whom they are. The sons play on the mama. The mamas and the daughters play on the daddy. They play. That's why he identified the adulterous and the adulteress. Uh, l- l- let me read this what Yoshua says. He says, but he answered the pseudo conscience of those that questioned him. He said unto them, this is a rough and evil. It is perverted. He says, an evil and an adulterous, those that practice idolatry, they practice the superficial form of true worship to Yah, Jehovah. But it's deluded with every kind of damned of vile nuance there is. And their hearts are not in tune with that because if we love him, we do what he commands us to do. He calls us an evil and an adulterous generation. You're always seeking after some kind of sign. Prove what you say is right. No, Jezebel, it's not that I prove what I say is right. It's you proving me wrong. You can't do it, man. They're always seeking some kind of sign. He's saying there's only one sign. The sign of Yoshua. He has gone down into the belly of the grave of sin, into our nephesh, into the midst of our minds. And our minds reject him. Just like hell could not hold him. Our minds are so convoluted and so polluted. We can't hold the Torah. We can hold gossip for years and folly for months and days. But we can't hold the love of Yah up here in this uh, demented thing. Because it's full of every kind of idolatrous and idol worshipping. And every kind, not Zabach, but every kind of sacrifice to hell there is. It would impel your sure. To gather into the synagogue of death and destruction. There's only one place you're going to find life. It's in this book. Through the power and the revelation of this book. You're not going to find it from a doctor. They love money. They make money. They're greedy dogs. You're going to find it here. No other place. No other place. Yoshua also says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed. Are we ashamed of him? This little light of mine, I have no light, but Yeshua is my my or He's going to shine in me when I walk. He shines when I talk. He shines, shine in me. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of my lights. I don't play. There was a lady yesterday when I went out. We're the same age. She says to me, I said to me, she said. You look very nice. I don't respond to people when they say that. And she said, I knew that her ruach was genuine in the sense that she was not some flirtatious woman. She says, I'm not saying that to be fresh with you. But uh, I just complimented you. I say, ma'am, I understand. I said, how old are you? Well, we're the same age. She said, life stopped when you turn six. I say, stop that. You're 60 years old. Get out and walk, Simon. You shared a few pounds, you realize life doesn't stop. I said, no, life is the beginning of that which shall be the end, which is death. And so my life doesn't stop. I got work to do next week. Got to get it done. You're sure to say, if you're ashamed of me and of my word, he said he came in the volume of this book, did he not? If you're ashamed of his words, the book speaks of him. He is the Torah. He is the wisdom of Yah that was made. Bara, created just like he created all things. In his power and in his knowledge. He was made flesh. 
We're ashamed of anything in this book. When you're ashamed of something, you hide it. You don't reference that. You don't reference that. You don't talk about his name. We can laugh and jackass and clown, but we don't discuss him. Because we don't give a damn about him. We don't love him. I'm talking to your house. You're not just here for some reason. Even you, my enemies, you're his enemy. You love the world and the things of the world. Your daughters fashion yourself like $3 whores and Jezebels. And you effeminate boys, you don't have the strength of a man. You're Nahar, you're little boys. You're not a man. You may have the similitude or in a form, but you're not a man. And that's a fact. He says this, you shame of me in what? In this adulterous and sinful generation. We can pretend all we want to. We can say praise your heart doesn't mean a damn thing. It's not my words that express him. It's the volume of whom I am that is express him. And so when people say certain things, they're not speaking of some kind of natural ability or attitude. They're seeing something that they don't understand. That's what they are seeing. It's not about that and say, I know I know him. Nobody can tell me what this book tells us, whether we his enemies or his friend. And if you love the world, you love the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and you're prideful. It's an amazing because I learned that as a young ignorant student of Torah, I've never been proud of anything because all pride is death. Pride will take, bring you to fall. And when you get haughty about your pride, well, that's my son, that's my wife. She's a Jezebel. Everybody knows what she is. We won't even defend y'all like that, but we'll defend the most urgent, wicked way. But we won't stand for him. I'm a warrior. You can be a soldier, but I'm a warrior and I die. I don't mind dying. Period. He says, if you're ashamed of me, also the Son of Man shall be ashamed of you. Uh, he, in the coming of the splendor of his Abba, and with the Melachim, when he comes, he said, you were ashamed of me. These misvoots of you are meant to be kept. They're meant to be shama. They're meant to be guarded with our hearts. We hedge them about with thorns. We don't let nothing uh, interfere with that. I don't care if it's mama's death or daddy's death. Uh, you let nothing interfere with what Yah commands. Uh, I don't give a damn what it is. My mother can get about in a grave and die. God, I will not interfere with this. And the ways of Yah. And we take it so nonchalantly. We think that, well, it doesn't matter. It does matter. It has great ramifications. Uh, you defy him. Uh, you're his enemy. We're in a battle, are we not? I was in the military. I was a soldier. I wasn't a warrior because I didn't know how to command. So you'll never be a warrior. But in Iraq, our Zahin, quite there, he's listening. He was a soldier. He was a warrior. You can look at his physicality and know he was a warrior. And when you did not diso when you disobeyed a lawful order, when the captain said, go and take the right flank, you said, I, I, I'm scared, captain. He said, go and take the right flank. flank. Why do you think he would kill you? Because you would destroy the whole Akmikaya as a Marine. He would pull out that 45 and he carried one on his side for that reason. To blow your brain. He would kill you dead. Because mutiny, Billy Bob, he, caused, he would cause mutiny by... Striking an office and we strike the chief of command, Yahshua. When we don't do all that he commands. He makes no exception for you, your mama, your daddy, your sons, your daughter. He doesn't give a damn. You can reject that. But that's almighty Yahweh. I don't care if you're young or oh, old. Oh, these young ones got imas by imuna. Because they have seen over the years the the beauty of that with you that have come to be much and you hear. I didn't ask them to do that. They came to me and say, well, you must us. All of us want to go down. Yeah, it's not some toy to play with. A few more scriptures and I'm down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't play the role of a harlot in our minds. There's nothing more vile than an adulterous unfaithful woman and the unfaithful man it destroys one there's nothing more vile and more vicious on the conscience of either one it's wrong 
We don't play on this man like that. You come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, you don't play on y'all like that. You without any excuse. Uh, he says, Zakaha Shabbat, Shumakados. He means what he says. Uh, he doesn't bite his tongue either. He means that. Well, you drive things, man. I do drive things. The world drives you to do what it wants you to do. You deny him and denounce him. I drive you to show you what's right. It's one thing that we know what the world shapes in us. One thing. I want to read this. And the reason I, we know we hate him because the Torah says because the carnal mind, the way we think. When Yah says lover, you say now nah, I wait. When the Torah says let everything that have breath praise Yah, you don't praise him. We're not even hypocrites. I was looking this morning at two teachings. The beast the dragon. In one word of all that I will teach on beginning this week, the word A-G-A-I-N-S-T. We don't give a damn about understanding his truth. And when I began to see that one word, I say, yeah, four times in one verse you speak that. I will stop on the beast and the dragon. I think this is of great value. He adjusts this little one word. He says, because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah. The carnal mind hates Yah. Any activities or anything that produce the carnal affection, I don't give a damn what we say. We hate him. Any time we frolic and we enjoy the carnal things, we hate him. I explain the feast of Yah and men hear me explain that they say, I understand, especially Sukkah. I say they were God in the city and there was no one preaching like me, but there would be the Gadol Kohan, and he would read the Torah, and those that were the protégés, and those out of the tribe of Levi, and they were reading the city of Yerushalayim. And on every block, there was someone reading because they didn't have the power to print. It took them years to print one, and they memorized it. And I will see Zachin David uh, and Akshibri, his family. He brought them all to Yerushalayim. Uh, and we would gather at the east gate uh, of the city. And we would set up our sukkah. And we would, we would enjoy the wonderful foods uh, and the wines of the fellowship. We would cry. We would sing. Uh, we would dance. Uh, there was no time to sleep. Uh, we would walk down and hear Zakin Bidimi and Yeshuran. Zakin Shibri, Zakin Yeshuran. We would see them. Akmi Kayak, hear his voice uh, over there. And it was a time of excitement. We will gather in the market and hear the Kohan read from the Torah of Yatari. Mind us of his kindness and what he's done for us. You're going to hell, man. It will give us strength for the meeting of Pesach. We will journey back our miles, hundreds of miles home with great anticipation. I'm closing here. Hallelujah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah. Why? You know when you hate Yah, you get mad at me, I don't care who you are, you can get upset. This is what the book says. The carnal mind is an enemy of Yah. How do you know it's a carnal mind? Why? Because uh, it is not subject to the Torah. It will not do what the Torah says. It will make excuses. You can dress it up any way we want to. We can dress up ourselves. Well, you don't have to be there to be right. Well, you're not in Yahshua anyway. You're sure we can search the book. And he said, there were many that were of us. They were not from among us, but they were not of us. So I don't have, you don't have to convince me. <laughs> I'm not here for you to convince. You're wicked. You're carnal minded. That's why you love the lust of the flesh and the lust of your eyes. You got pride. I got me a car. You silly little boy. It, that's a statement of who you are. Statement of who I am. When you see me, you know who I am. I'm a man. I'm a man. You know who I am. And I don't have no pride. This mind is not subject to the Torah. It will not obey it. And it says, I want to emphatically speak, neither indeed can it be. It will find excuses to disobey Yah. It will find reasons to do their own thing. You're going to die that way, young man. Old man, you're going to die that way. Old woman, I tell you all the time, the way you are, the way you, the, the way you uh, confront you, you're going to die that way. That's why he raised up someone like me that's ignorant, that is unlearned. But I'm a learned man. 
My man learned it. I was not taught by the world. It was amazing that every man I met in the world who called themselves superior preachers, they would always say to me, you're not tainted like the other men. Because I know your lies and I know what you're saying is not right. I don't fight against you. I'll fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Hallelujah. What are enemies for? I want to read this last thing before Zachin comes. He speaks this to his enemies. I'll tell you what this is found. He's found by the utterance of Nuhum, the Nobi, the prophet. The Nobi. He speaks with great clarity. He says, I want you to know that Yah is Kana. I don't know what Kana is. I don't understand the jealousy of that. It's beyond the concept of what we think jealousy is. He is, uh, he is Kana. And he says, I want you all to know this. He's speaking to his house. And Yahweh, he is the one that's revenge. Nahum 1, 2. He is the one that takes a vengeance and vengeance against. Who? Yah revenge. And he is Hama. He is furious. He has a hot rage of his disposition. He is angry. He's mad as hell. Because he's going to cast me down to the depths of hell. He does it with great indignation. He does it with displeasure because he despises. Who does he despise? He says, Yah will take vengeance on his oyeb, on his adversaries, his enemies. He's going to kill them all. Yorkshire said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The words that I speak, they're not mine, but the words of the one that sent me. He said, you are my adversaries. And he reserved only one thing for his enemies. That is Ebra. He reserved wrath, death, and terror. You're not going to take the dam of your shoe in vain. I don't care if it's your young 32, 22 year old daughter that thinks she's Philly Fly. He's going to kill the Jezebel. I don't care if it's your son that's walking in his rebelliousness. He's going to kill the cowardly dog. I don't care if it's my old granddaddy. He's going to kill him. You get set in your old ways, it's hard to change that. Those and it's hard to teach a dog new tricks. Well, I'm glad I'm not a dog then. And show me the way, and I will follow it. The things that we were saying, oh, the way I used to walk. Oh, I don't walk no more since the Torah of Yah took over my mind. You know the things I used to do. Oh, the conviction of the Torah will not allow me to do them no more somewhere. You have not been touched by the finger of Yah. I say this, come on, Zachin David. He said to us yesterday as we were talking, Zachin Benjamin and Achim Kaya, we sat in the plaza for a moment in the marketplace. He says, Reak, my grandmother, correct me if I'm wrong when you come here. My, ma my grandmother, she was born in 1889. She, did I remember it right then? All right. I don't forget things that I count a value. And so she taught me one thing. She will always tell me, son, she died when she was 105. She never missed service. She went until she was 103. She had a fall. And his daddy said, I'm not taking you no more. And she got mad. She stayed in the house of Yah. And she said to him as a son, Son, you just walk with Yah. Keep what's right before him. And it'll be all right. Come on, Azake. May the riches of Yah rest upon you and you. Your precious is shown. May he strengthen you in the labor. Shalom, shalom, Yisrael. We do truly thank Almighty Yah for the blessing and the, the simplicity of life to be alive. I, I told Yah for the simplicity of that, and I continuously say the simplicity of that because he has worked his marvelous work, and it is just that. It is marvelous in his eyes and in his doings. The scripture reminds us, as I thank Almighty Yah, that we sang that beautiful song. It says to let everything that has breath yes. praise Yahweh. I told her, Yah, for the spirit of that, I was thinking of that very song as you began to sing that song, and my heart just began to pour out to Yah to thank him for the great mercies of that. 
to be able to breathe his air is a blessing. To be able to give him his praise, it is a blessing. It is the greatness of his mercy by which we have our essence and our being in him and in his precious son, Yahshua. We thank Yah for the mercies of that, to be able to give him that praise. Yes, yes. All too often, the world, and, and I, I told Yah the way where I brung that out, that the world and their knowledge cannot surpass the wisdom That's and understanding right. of Yah. That's right. They cannot do that. I want to talk to them about that today. Right. I want to talk about this out of the book of Tehillim. The, the Psalm 50. And this message is entitled, Now Consider This. Yah says that to Yisrael. Yes. If you've ever watched any two components as they go against one another, individuals may have a discussion, a conversation, or an argument. Yes. One has to raise their voice mm -hmm. above the acceptable noise level to make their point. But then the other feels offended. Yes. And now they must raise their voice too because they feel as though their argument is more pertinent than the one that previously spoke. So we're going to say today, now consider this because Yah is going to have the final say so. It matters not how much man raises his voice. It matters not how many dissertations or doctoral theses. It matters not how many books, how many lectures that man can produce. Now consider this. Yah is going to have the final say. And the grandness and the greatness of Yah having the final say is based on the simplicity that he spoke the final say from the very beginning. Hallelujah. There is nothing in all the world, the beauty of that song, do you know that there is none like Yah? I love that. Do you know that there's none like Yah? I love that. And I say again, he's going to have the final say. They say in the world, we're going to borrow their phrase for 30 seconds. They say in the world that knowing is half the battle. We're going to challenge that. Because according to Yah's word, knowing is all the battle. Because Yah is going to win. And when we put all our trust in him, knowing that we are Barak by just doing that, then so be it. Knowing is not half the battle. Knowing Yah is the battle. It is the battle in its entirety. And because these nations of the world do not know Yah, they do not know his love, they do not know his precious mercies, all that they say and do can be counted as dumb. Yisrael has to really pay attention to Yah's word and just be so thankful. I was praying for some understanding in something and I reminded of the beauty of being able to swim. The pressure of water, the deeper you go, the deeper the pressures of the water upon anything that is within it. But yet scripture reminds us that one day this earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of Yah as the waters cover the earth. Now if the waters cover the earth like that and that kind of pressure there, you won't be able to do bad there, my friend. You won't be able to transgress then, my friend. The pressure of Yah's word is going to suppress all evil, all wickedness. All wrongdoing. Yes. So we have to take great delight in Yah's word, not be afraid to study his word, yes. not get depressed when the messenger opens up the book yes. and gives us the greater and deeper meaning of the word. That's no time to get depressed. You want to get depressed? Get depressed Monday morning. Yes. Come on, my friend. When you got to go to those plantations, get depressed then. Yes, sir. When you've got to be in their world and deal with the things that they do, get depressed then. You want relief, you turn to Yah. Yes, sir. That's what the world's going to have to understand. Yes, Allow me to do this, Yah willing. Let's go to the book of Tehillim 50. I'm going to open right at this 14th verse. I won't be long. Hallelujah. 
When I and Reak talk, we often remind one another, and I'm so thankful for that. The word says that those that know Yah and love him, they talk to one another often. Yeah. They remind one another, they strengthen one another, they encourage each other in his word. Yes. And we should do just that. The glory of this way of life is real simple. Real simple. The glory is that there is no other alternative. We can take great delight in just the simple fact that there is no other alternative to Yah. I like that. I like that. He's so merciful unto us, we have nothing else that is an alternative. He says, offer unto Yah thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Hallelujah. He said, offer thanksgiving. I mean, you give that. Pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I like the way he personalizes that. This is the argument. Yah is raising his voice. He says, call upon me. And I will deliver you in the day of trouble. And thou shalt glorify me. You see that? See, the world, they want to yell. They want to raise their voice. They want to lift up their dirty, damnable, pagan gods. They like that. But this is an argument. Yah says in his word, he says in the book of Hoshea that he has a controversy with the nations. So if there is a controversy, then he has a right to raise his voice. They have not heard his voice yet. He has a right. This is an argument. And he's going to raise his voice above the acceptable noise levels of man. So he says, call upon me in the day of trouble. Do we call upon him? Don't wait till trouble comes. Call upon him when all is well with you. Call upon him when you're not so sure. Call upon him when you don't see your way clear. Call upon him. He says, and I will answer you. He's not a man that he should lie. You know, man, they'll lie to you. They'll tell you, I'll be there for you. And then you can't find them. But not Yah. Come on, Yisrael. Yes, he says, but unto the wicked, Yahweh says, I like this. He addresses them personally. He does not address them like a coward. Mm -hmm. He does not gossip. Yes. He has not Facebooked them. Mm -hmm. He has not texted or emailed them. He has addressed them personally. It says, unto the wicked, Yahweh says, yes. what have you to do yes, yes. to declare my statutes? Mm -hmm. Or that you should take my covenant in your mouth. I like that. That's pretty heavy. In other words, he's saying to the world, don't you even discuss the book. Don't you even bring it up because you will not live by it. You will not declare it. Don't you even bring it up. You know how they say in the world, they say, don't go there, man. So he's saying to the wicked, what do you have to do with this? You see, I was looking at a, a, a calendar and a map that we have in the assembly in Baltimore and they have listed under the footnote the flags of all the nations on the earth. And they, they say that there are 196 different nations according to the dating on that one. Beautiful point. But we have to go one further. Because Yah says in his word unto Yisrael, he said, You only of all the families of the earth have I known. He said it to one nation. I have several grandchildren and I told one, I said, do me a favor. Go in the room and get my notepad and bring that back to me. Yes. Two of them run at the same time to go get it. And they're arguing over who's going to bring the notepad back. Yes. And my grandson says, he told me to get it. Yes. And I looked at the simplicity of that. Sure. I said, that's the same with Yah's word. Sure he spoke to Yisrael. Yes, sir. He says, you take this to the world. Yes. We have to live this. Sure we There's more to yes. this than oh. just talking. Yes. Sure. We have to live this. The word of Yah, it is living. That's what he says his word does for us. He gives life. He says, I both kill and I make alive. See, they like the effeminate aspects of reading scripture. They like that fagified Jesus. But they won't open up what the book says is going to happen if we don't obey. All those nations, every nation on the planet, whatever their religious doctrine and philosophies are, it's so interesting that they're all always right. Sure. They're all always right, yet they all can never get along, but yet they all say that they have 
the truth. But when it comes to the word of Yah, none of them, they don't want this. Yah is right. And in his argument, he's going to have the final say so. In his argument, he's going to throw the first and the last punch. And that's all that there is to it. He's going to have the final say. See, people use this word. They say that they're violent. Let's get this straight. In the word violent, the root word there is violate. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with fighting. It has nothing to do with fisticuffs. You've transgressed. You've gone wrong. So when we will not uplift Yah's Torah, when we despise his commandments, we are violent. Hallelujah. We may never have shot, stabbed, or karate chopped anyone. If we've ever transgressed, we are violent. We are violent. I don't understand the depth of that spirit, and I don't want to go into that. But these men, with all their wisdom and their knowledge and understanding, cannot seem to see beyond Yah's word because he has not given it unto them. That's so beautiful. To have a perfect working relationship with the heavenly Abba. Yes. Have a perfect relationship yes. with him. Come on now. Yes, People delight yes. in knowing movie stars or politicians, governors and military men. They delight in knowing them, but people Forgive don't over rejoice in knowing Yah. Come on, just for elders to know Yah. Yeah. And we should take a delight. Can you imagine that? He give you one day out of each and every week to reacquaint yourself with him. Come on now. And when that day rolls around, in many instances, people are depressed. They're saddened. They hate to see the incoming of Shabbat. Family can throw barbecues, birthday parties, funerals. They can do anything. And we stop everything that we're doing for them. I'll be 50 years old this year. I got to acknowledge I've only been to one, I believe one, so-called family reunion in my life. I've only been to one. My, brother, my father brought us up in this way of life, and we never went. Every year they would do it. Friday evening, whatever city they held it in, everybody would come in. They would be gathering. On Shabbat would be the big day. Their shindig. They would get together. And on Sunday... They all went to church. We never went. We never went. My daddy kept Shabbat. He'd preach. Sometimes it would just be my father, my mother, my brothers and sisters, no more than seven or eight of us at a time. The old man would preach to seven or eight as if it was seven or eight hundred. Yah told Yisrael, we're two or three. Are gathered in mind. He didn't say two or three hundred. He didn't That's say two right. or three thousand. If you get that many together, you should get afraid. He says we're two or three. Elder Johnson used to say, the more people you get together, I've learned that the more devils you got. As a young man, that statement used to really bother me. It was because my mind, my understanding had not come to comprehend it. I did not understand. But the more people would get together, the more problems that you would have. Because we would not fully submit to Yah's word. We have a mind as humanity that when that sin entered in, it set us on a course and on a path where we would forever seek to rebel against Yah and to make ourselves right and to prove that Yah is wrong. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. If he extends our days a thousand years per man, we're not going to prove him wrong. We cannot. Let's go a little further here. In the 17th verse, he says, Seeing thou hatest instruction and cast my words behind thee. This is interesting. They hate instruction and they cast his words behind them. Because whatever it is that they're after, Shaitan has set it in their minds that they can fulfill their own will. That's not Yah. He said, in outlying their sins, when thou saw a thief, you consented with him. You gave him command. Oh, that's all right. Nobody saw you. Go ahead with that. He said, and have been partakers with adulterers. 
you tolerate them. You let them go. You will not rebuke them. You will not show them the greatness of his Torah. He says, you gave your mouth to evil and thy tongue to frame deceit. Yes, I love the way y'all's talking here. Yes, because all these things can be found and outlined in his yes, word. In, my, in my his word. Name. If y'all's word has the answer to all things, yes. how can men really declare that they're so wise if they will not take heed to this? It matters not how many degrees that they have. It they can go to the most prestigious universities in the history of the world. Isn't it not interesting that those same universities are now confessing that they are the ones who hid his word? Yeah, yeah. We have these things that they now call the lost books. Well, they were never lost if you suppress them. You suppress the truth. Sure. Somebody's got to pay for that, man. Somebody, no, it does not matter that they're now dead. Come on now, he's going That's to resurrect that body. That's the truth. Somebody has to give an account That's the truth. for the wrong that they've done. Yes, sir. And though they've sought to hide his word and his truth, they have no control over his ruach because he is able to raise up from among, as Reach said, yes. among us, yes. many of us that are ignorant, as they say, and unlearned. Yes. Yes. But if Yah puts that ruach upon you, come on now. Mm -hmm. All the degrees from Harvard, Yale, Cambridge, Oxford, yes, sir. they do not hold the candle That's to the greatness fact. of the word of Yah. That's a fact. I'll take Yah's word any day. Absolutely. I'll take that. Absolutely. He says, you sit and speak against thy brother mm -hmm. and slanders thine own mother's son. Come on now, he's bringing his home. Mm -hmm. He's bringing his home to Yisrael. Yes, he's letting us know, and it's for me, Ra. Yes, he's letting us know. These things you have done, yes, I have. and I kept silence. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. See, the wisdom of Yah having the answer to all things. I like the way society thinks that they're going to get away with this. Yeah. He says in the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe, 8 and 11, he reminds them. Now consider this. He reminds them. Though sentence concerning an evil work mm -hmm. is long coming, yeah, Therefore is the heart of the sons of men the fully, set fully set to do evil. That's what he so they do a thing tonight, and they appear to have gotten away with it in the morning. So then they become strengthened in that evil, and they continue to run, and they build upon that evil, sin upon top of sin. And they continue because nothing appears to happen. But they forget their own manner of their works. In anywhere in the world, a crime, a murder, a robbery can happen, and the police come. Mm -hmm. And they show up with their investigatory powers, and they ask two primary questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, yes. what happened? Mm -hmm. And number two, yes. who did it? Yes, sir. So if they think that when Yah shows up, he does not already have the answer of number one, what happened? Yes, sir. And number two, who did it? Yes, sir. Yah's going to solve this. This is universal Who done it for humanity. But Yah knew from the very beginning. Sure he Having declared the greatness of his word, I told her, Yah that we don't have to gamble, but if we were gambling people today, we'd have to hedge all our bets in Yah. Yes, and we'll walk away winners. I will. Because he's going to have the final say-so in this argument. In that day of Yah setting forth his hand to correct all that has been done, there'll be no reprieve. There'll be no probation before judgment. There'll be no postponements of the verdicts. There'll be no buying off of the judges. In that day, it will only be the sentence, the true sentence of Yah's word that's going to be executed. Many in that day will regret the day that they were ever born. We want to be in Yah's word. We want to be in his way yes. and in his comfort. Yes. And not in a high-minded position of prestige, but to be so meek in our minds yes. that we beg for his forgiveness for all of our own transgression because sometimes we don't know how great we have it in just knowing Yah. I remind myself every day that every breath that I take, I am breathing his air. 
For that I am so thankful. The mind and the thoughts that we have, we cannot even begin to conceive of it in our own mind yeah. except yeah. his will abide with us that we understand. That is the truth. This thing will make you cry, Israel. This one will make you sit down and cry. Yeah. When we look at the world and the high-mindedness of the world and remind ourselves that he says, come out of her, yes. my people. Yes. You stop thinking like them. Yes. You come out of that. You do what I command you to do. Yes. And it may be well with you always. Hallelujah. He says, these are the things that thou hast done. And I kept silent. I didn't say anything. I let you go. He says, I let you slide. My grandmama used to say to us when we were little children, we'd be cutting up from time to time. She says, all right now, I'm going to get you eventually. And when I get you, I'm going to get you for old and for young. We didn't understand what that meant. But Grandma held it in her mind that from time to time when she had to discipline the boys, you did this the other day and I let it go. You did that. You did that over there and I let it go. But now my cup has filled up and I'm going to get you for young and old. From Father Adam to the last man standing when Yahshua comes, Yah's going to get this world for young and for old. No one gets away. So in the midst of the arguments and the midst of the discussion, all of the key religions of the world are seeking their chances at unification. Everybody wants to come together. It matters not the depth of the argument now. Let's just agree to not disagree. And that's foolishness. Yah says he has a controversy with the nations. And more so, he said that he had a controversy as well with Yisrael. He has a controversy with us because he gave us his Torah. And we were given the command to keep, therefore, and do them. I like the way he worded that. He says, this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shouldn't be looking at them and be awed by the wisdom and the strength of their understanding. Their understanding of all that they think they perceive is at best a grotesque misunderstanding of their own delusions. Hear what I just said, Israel. They misunderstood all that their mind has misled them into thinking that they understand. There's no understanding without Yah. There is no understanding. That word teaches us that he prepared a body. And in Hamashiach, he embodied all the wisdom and all the strength that we would need as our guide. They teach us these words today. They say that you should be a good role model. Well, a role model is an actor. He's playing a role that is false. And they want you to model your life after that. That's not what y'all commanded. Mm -mm. He commanded us to walk in his ways. He says if his own son was to stray from his commandment, that he would chastise him. Yes, yes. So that is not a role model. That's a fact. That is a perfect way of life. Sure that's what he gave us. A perfect way of life. Mm -hmm. A way that's so perfect that he gave him such a wonderful name sure. that he says that it was a name above every name, every name. that is to be named. Sure that has to be thoroughly examined so that all the world can come to understand just how great Yah, Yahweh sure is. On, they have to be told that. Sure. This is a fight. And in any fight, a fighter wants to throw the best punches that he can to land them as hard as he can to knock the opponent out. You don't want to just dizzy him up. You want to knock him out. And that's what Yah's word does. It is our strength. It is our backup. It is our guide. It is all. It is our light. It is all that we need. This here. There are not enough hours in the day to study the word of Yah the way that we would all love to. But yet he's given you the time in your life. He's given unto each man the specified time that he needs. So he says, you thought that I was altogether such an one as yourself. Now that's what humanity thinks. They, think, they do things. They think that Almighty Yah is like them. 
the homosexual community, they think that he condones their behavior. Yes. The thief and the robber, they think that he agrees with their behavior. That's right. The cheater, the banker, all of them, everyone thinks that he is like unto them. No, there's yes. none like Yah. Yes, yes. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. I like the way he talks here. He says, I will reprove you and set them in order before your eyes. You're going to see this. This is not something now where the nations are all just wondering. No, no, no. He says, you're going to see this. We're going to wait and see now. Yes, sir. We're going to see this. All the damage that could be done has been done. The damage has been done. But now Yah is rising up and that name is spreading now. You're not going to set a fire in the wilderness that's dry and just have it smolder and fester. No, it's going to burn. It's going to travel. And Yah's word is going forth now. It's going forth. Even in the era of our minds, in some instances, that word is going forth. And the power of Yah's word, it is taking charge. It is taking command, which is what he does. When I say again that the nations of the world, they make their points and their arguments, they forget this verse here. He says, now consider this. Ye that forget Yahweh, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. I like that. He let them know, you consider this. Think about this now. Because when I rise up to shake terribly the earth, he's going to do it. And I love that. These nations today, with all of their nuclear weaponry, with all their commands of the sea and the airwaves, and their abilities to go out far into the space, Yah reminds them that from there will I bring thee down. We will. He has the answer to all things carefully written in his word. Yeah. I'm not going to take any scientific arguments. They're not going to convince me by any theses or doctorates. I'm not going to do that. People underestimate the beauty of Yah's wisdom and his understanding. Yah allowed his word to be placed right there. And even though they were able to tamper with the word, they could go no further than he allowed them to go. Hallelujah. And the beauty of the testimony of his power was that they could not go beyond that decree. They could not. So then that means, in the simplicity of the argument, that we're all without excuse. That's beautiful there. He let the world do all that they thought they could. Get that name out of the book. Make certain that they cannot say that. Remove them. Come. Let us move against them that the name of Israel yeah. may be no more in remembrance. You did all that, but you could not stop the mighty hand of Almighty Yah. He says that you thought that I was such an one altogether as yourself. You thought that I would forget that. You thought that I went to sleep on you. No, the book teaches us that he who keepeth Israel shall neither Slumber, no sleep. Hallelujah. I love that. He said to us that even in times past, concerning some of our sins, he says, I winked at that. I just, I let that go. So, okay, I saw that. I let that, I'm going to let that go. I was reading in the Lord's books how he says so beautifully that it made me cry, Raya. He says that it was in his mind to form us before he even formed the world. That's love. It was in his mind before he even planted a place for you to set the soles of your feet. It was in his mind to make you. That's love. Knowing this one will obey, this one will transgress, this one will forget, but I will send a great one. And I will leave in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people who will trust in the name of Yahweh. I'd rather be that afflicted and poor people trusting in his name than to have billions of dollars right now and not know Yah. Mm -mm. I don't care about your money. I'd rather know Yah because he will sustain us. He will provide. See, the people look at the world today and they look at the scriptures and the mighty works and the wondrous things that Yah's done and they say, well, he doesn't do that today. Yes. So how then could that be true? That's true. 
But yet these are his witnesses. They wrote these things. Thousands of years ago, they had their relationship with Yah, and they left the record and an example of you and I, what we are to do today. Now, we don't believe them, though they had the Ruach, and they lived through this. And we will not receive their testimony, but men alive today attempt to tell us what happens, what they say were billions of years ago. And we believe them. We have this backwards. Come on now. I'm going to believe Yah. The witness of Yah's word and the truth of his testimony shows itself in the earth, in all things. If Yah said that my word shall accomplish where I send it and it will not return unto me void, we're going to have to trust him in that. We're going to have to trust him in that. He says to the wicked again, now consider this, Ye that forget Yah, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Yes, sir. If Yah is talking about tearing them yes. to pieces, then we had better know that there is a side of Yah that can match Torah when it says, it is not good to have an angry Yah. Yes. It's not good to make him angry with us. Yes. Mm -mm. We've got to walk in this, yes, to pray to be kept safely. If you were to hold your hand out right now and you see the shadow over the pages of your Torah, yeah. you're reminded of the beauty and the simplicity of Yah's word. Yeah. He says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High yeah. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. To be under the shadow of the Almighty, that very image that casts that shadow has to be very close. Come on now. Be close. See, my shadow is not being cast in Baltimore. I'm too far away to cast my shadow. But if I can cast that shadow here, and Yah says we would dwell in his secret place and be under his shadow, come on, that's close there. Is that or is that not a relationship? See, this isn't theology here. Come on, this isn't philosophy now. Yah told Yisrael that he would be a very ever-present help in time of trouble. He's right there. We cannot allow any types of doubt, any disputations to take command of our mind. He didn't tell you, Israel, you blindly trust and follow me. He gave you all the proof that you needed. He gave his witnesses. They don't look at the word close enough to see. He gave proof. See, we follow these men today, the world does, blindly. And they rob them. And they keep believing them. Yes. But now Yah has never robbed. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe. Yes, What's wrong with this picture? Yes, come, on. come on, we've got to come to know him. Yes, and to come to know him, we have to go to his secret place. Yes. And to dwell under his shadow. Yes. This is why our father Dawi, he did say, I was glad yes, when they said unto me, oh, yes. let us go to the house yes, of Yah. Yes. Come on. You go to Yah's house. Hallelujah. He says, whosoever offers praise, honors, and sanctifies me. And to him that ordereth his conduct aright, will I show the salvation of Yah. That's beautiful there. He said that. He said that he would blot out all our iniquities and our transgressions. He said that he would no more remember them. But the nations today, they blot them out themselves. They forgive themselves. They wipe away all their own transgressions. And yet they do not even have the power to retain their own breath. For when it is time to die, a man must die. The nations of the earth today, they dishonor Yah. Can I read something out of the lost book? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the book of Baruch. This, this, the, the writings of this dear brother, he laid this thing out in such a way that, man, oftentimes I got to get up, I got to be up and get out of that bed at about 5 a.m. and sometimes late night, I look over, it's 2.30. I'm still sitting there with the lamp on looking into the scriptures. My wife will say from time to time, don't you think you got to cut that light out? You know you got to get up. So I said, I'll cut it out. Yeah. I said, but I'll get up to you. 
and I get up. Y'all make a way. I was on the scaffold the other day and I thought about you all. I almost cried here. I don't mean that in the sense of effeminacy. I mean cry in the spirit of joy and honor for y'all's word. I was on that scaffold and I was singing to myself. I just broke out singing. I will praise the name of Yahweh. I will praise the name of Yahweh. With my hands and my voice, I will sing and rejoice. Praise the name of Yahweh. Abba Yahweh. And as I was putting the last bricks in place at the top of this particular house, I noticed that there was about nine or ten birds all lined up as if they were amazed to hear a man singing praise to Yah. And yet the birds, the bees, everything obeys Yah except man. So I looked at the birds and I said to myself, they must be amazed to hear one of us sing praises as they do. And I thought about you all, and when you began to sing that today, that came to my mind. I, I said, Toda Yah, just to hear that song. Let me do this here. This, the messenger of Yah said something to Yisrael that the world really, they don't pay attention to this. As the time begins to go, we look up sometimes and we say, where did the day go? He says in the 20th chapter here, Therefore, behold, the days will come and the times will hasten more than the former. Yes, sir. And the season will speed up on more than those that are past. Yes. And the years will pass more quickly than the present years. Therefore, have I now taken away Zion in order that I may the more speedily visit the world in its season. Now, therefore, hold fast in thine heart everything that I command thee and seal it in the recesses of thy mind. Seal it. The time is drawing to a close. Here it is. Just a few months ago, we were in the cold season. Here we are now going into June in the midst of the year. You look up pretty soon, we'll be in Sukkot. And then the cold season of the December months will be upon us again. Yah is hastening the time. Everyone seems to think that they have such great lengths and great time. But the times for them are winding up. The times are winding up. Baruch gives the encouragement to the elders in such a wonderful way. He says unto them, For these are they who shall inherit that time which has been spoken of. And theirs is the inheritance of the promised time. These are they who have inquired for themselves treasures of wisdom. And with them are found stores of understanding. And from the mercies they have not withdrawn. And from the truth of Torah they have preserved. They have preserved. For them will be given the world to come. And the dwelling of the rest who are many will be in the fire. Do ye therefore, so far as ye are able, instruct the people, for that labor is ours. For if you teach them, you will quicken them. Hallelujah. If you teach them, you will strengthen them. You will quicken them. He gives the final phase as I wrap this up. We want to look at something that he says to Yah's people today. The nations of the world have gone so far ahead of Yah, but yet they cannot lay down the tracks of salvation. He says again, moreover, the Most High, who is long suffering towards us here, and hath shown to us that which is to be, and have not concealed from us that which will befall in the end times. Before, therefore, judgment exacts its own, and truth that which is its due, let us prepare our souls that we may enter into the possession of, and not be taken possession of. And that we may hope and not be put to shame. Yes. And that we may rest with our abas and not be tormented with our enemies. Yes, sir. For the youth of this world is past and the strength of the creation is already exhausted. 
and the advent of the times is very short. Yes, it is. Yeah, they have passed by. And the pitcher is nearer to the cistern, and the ship to the port, and the course of the journey to the city, and life to the consummation. And again, prepare ye your souls, so that when ye sail and ascend from the ship, you may have rest, and not be condemned when you depart. For lo, when the Most High will bring to pass all these things, there will not be there again an opportunity for returning, nor a limit to the times, nor an adjournment to the hours, nor change of the ways, nor place for prayer, nor for the sending of petitions, nor for the receiving of knowledge, nor for the giving of love, nor for the place of repentance, nor supplication for offenses, nor intercession of the fathers, neither the prayer of the prophets nor help of the righteous. There, there is the sentence of corruptions, the way of the fire and the path that bring it to hell. On this account, there is one law by one, one age and one end for all who are in it. Then will he preserve those to whom he finds that he may be merciful. And at the same time, he will destroy those who are polluted with sins. I say to us, Israel, and to the world, now consider this, ye who forget Yah, lest he tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whosoever offer praise, giveth honor unto me. And him that ordereth his conduct aright, will I show the salvation of Yah. We thank Yah for the greatness of his mercy, for the extension of life and the gift of days that he has bestowed upon us all. And may the precious tender mercies of Yah continue to keep us all in this lifetime. Yah has given us all our portion in this lifetime and those things which are to be kept and to be prosperous unto Israel and to be able to enjoy life and never ever forget to give y'all all the praise, Hallelujah. all the honor, and all the glory. Hallelujah. 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 May y'all barack you all, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do praise the name of Yahweh yeah. for all the great and has toy express marvelous things that he has done for us, Yisrael Yah. As we heard from our Zachary, all things have been made by Almighty Yahweh. And there will be nothing that is made that we see, that we experience, if it was not for Him. Yes. If it was not for Torah, if it was not for Yahshua HaMashiach, we would not even be here today, Israel. But because of His Ahava, because of His tender husset toward Israel, He has not destroyed us. He has not even judged us by our sins. Because if he met that judgment to the tilt of his after his anger, then we will have been consumed. We will be consumed. Hallelujah. So he has set a time for us, Yisrael, even for us to gather at this time, even this feast, that he has brought us all here together. Whether here at Teshua or whether you that are visiting or listening by via live stream, he draws us by his Hakodesh Ruah. That's the only way we're going to be drawn unto him. And it's not by our own means or our own way. But it's because Yahweh draws and because he gathers. And because he goes out and he reaps his harvest. And he brings it into the barn, into his place of storage. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are his reward. We are the sheep of his pasture. We are his bane, his children, Israel. And he knows what we have need of, even before we even ask. Because a child don't know what they really need. They taste something sweet, they want that all the time. So Yahweh, he feeds us, Israel, with the meat, the substance that is needed. With the lashem, the bread, the precious bread, Yisra'ya, he even gives us what is needed that we may drink. The Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach. That we drink of the things that he has given unto us. 
We know the world, they have mixed drinks. They offer you all kind of drinks. All kind of things, Kool-Aid, sodas. And we find ourselves loving those things. And y'all here offers us the pure living water of his misfire. And because we have acquired such a taste for those things of the world, we find the things of y'all somewhat bitter. Well, we have to change the whole palette of everything. We have to be led by the Ruach HaKodesh, that we know what things that are needed, what things we need to take part of. Hallelujah. And once we do that, we obey what Yahweh has established. We'll find even the things that are bitter, even to the flesh, they're sweet. It calls us to be productive. It calls us to, to gain wisdom and understanding even of life and what life truly is. And we know that it rests in Yahshua HaMashiach, nothing else. Nothing else but his Torah. Hallelujah. So as we have heard, even Almighty Yahweh, he has not left us or has judged us or have destroyed us according to his anger or his wrath. But he gives us what he needs. Let's look at what it says here in Tehillim chapter 38, verse 1. As Dawid, he brings a zakah, a remembrance of what Yahweh has done. And the promises that Yahweh has spoken even unto him, that he will find those things bring into fluoration. He says, oh, Yahweh. He says, rebuke me not in your wrath, your hot displeasure. Why? Because it will destroy me. It will bring me to not to nothing. He said, neither Yahweh chasten me in your hot displeasure. Does Yahweh have the right to be hot, to be angry in his hot displeasure? Sure he does. Sure he does, Yisrael. But yet his Ahava is extended unto Ko Yisrael. That we are not destroyed, we are not dis- uh, consumed. He says, Yahweh, because of the affliction, he said, for thine arrows... He said, they stick fast. Your Torah, it is sharp. It cuts to the nephesh. And your arrows, they are on target. As we have heard today, those words, they were intended to hit the mark where they should have hit Yisrael. And each and every one of us, Yahweh did not miss us. And I barak Yahweh for that. He said, for your arrows, they stick fast in me. And your hand, they presseth me Sore. He goes on in verse 3. He said that there is no soundness in my flesh. We believe our flesh has soundness. We believe our flesh is strong and, and it could bear the weight of things, but it's not so, Yisrael. We are weak. We are, we are torn, as we have heard, asunder. He said, there is no soundness in my flesh. He said, because of your eye of your anger. He said, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin, because of my iniquity. He says, there's, there's no rest. The conscience of that, I've seen that because of what I have brought upon the nation of Kod Yisrael, and it is ever before me. He said, for my iniquities that have gone over my head. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing in my power. There's nothing left within me. They have gone over my head. As an heavy burden, he said, they are too heavy for me. There are many things that are too heavy for us, Israel. We cannot bear. Because of our iniquities, they have gone over our head. But yet they have not gone over Yahshua HaMashiach. He said that we could bring the heavy burdens, the load, and lay it at his feet. We should not enter into his Shabbat with burdens, burdensome, that we drag ourselves into the Bay of Kod Yisrael. Because we can lay everything, all things, it don't matter what it is, Yisrael, we can lay it all at the feet of Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because he cares. Why? Because his Ahava, it is that broad, that he is willing to carry the burden. He has carried the burden for us, Yisrael. So we should enter into this time, into this feast, into the Bay of Kod Yisrael, as we gather, as we join together with celebrating, with joy, and with happiness. Let me move on. He said, they're too heavy for me. He said that my wounds, they stink, and they are corrupt. Why? Why are, do our wounds stink? Why are they corrupt? Why is there so much folly? He says, because of my foolishness. 
He said, because of my foolishness. It wasn't my brother. It wasn't my neighbor. As we, the old song would say, it was not my sister. It's not my brother, but it's me. Oh, yeah. I stand in the need of the correction. I stand in the need of the Ahava of Almighty Yahweh. He said, because of my foolishness. He said, I am troubled. He said, I am bowed down greatly. He said, I go mourning all the day long. Does he not talk about his, his affliction? Does he not talk about the hurt and the pain? The, the pain is expressed, is it not? Let's read on a few more verses and see what he does. See if he resort to his flesh. See if he's trying to find any other comfort, but that which Yahweh has promised him. He said, my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. He said, I am feeble in verse 8, and I am sore broken. So I am broken down. He said, I roared by reason of my disquietness of my love. And he said in verse 9, he said, but all this, he said, almighty Yahweh, he said, all my desire, it is before you. You know the desire of my love. You know the intent of my heart, that it is before you. He said, and my groanings is not hid from you. Do we think Yahweh does not know our groanings, our pains, even our murmurings? Yes, right, Yahweh, that Yahweh, he does not know. He knows. And he understands. But yet, does that give us leave to step out of his mishvah, out of his Torah? Does that give us a ticket to sin, Yes, right, Yahweh? Verse 10, he said, my love, it panteth. It thrives, it search, it panteth. He said, my strength, it filleth me as for the light of my eyes. It also is gone from me. He said that my lovers, have we not had many lovers, Israel? How many lovers will be honest with ourselves? We love pride. We love the sin. We love those things. He said, my lovers... And he said, my friends, they stand aloft. They stand afar off. There's none there to help me. He said, from my sore. And he said, my kinsmen, they also stand afar off. Is it not something you're there for those who we call our kinsmen, cousins, brothers, whoever it may be? But when it's time that you need help, they're nowhere to be found. They don't have time. They don't have the means to assist. But yet Yahweh, he's always there for us. Yahshua, he's always there ready to assist. And we heard Azake as he had preached and brought forth the word for us today. He said, Yahweh, he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And he is not afar off. That's why we must abide under the shadow, Yisrael Yah. Yahweh, he knew where his help coming from. He knew his help coming from Almighty Yahweh. He goes on and said, they also that seek after my life. He said, they lay snares for me. And they that seek my hurt, they speak chievous, mischievousness things. And imagine deceit all the day long. He said, but I, Almighty Yahweh, as a deaf man, he said, I heard not. He said, I didn't allow those things to consume. I didn't allow what they spoke to drive me away from your midst for your Torah. He said, as a deaf man, he said, her not. He said, I was as a dumb man that openeth not his mouth. Do we find ourselves opening our mouths, Israel? Yah? We fight, we resist. We have something else to say. We're always trying to have the last word. Out of every skirmish, we got to be the one that ends it. But yet, even Yahshua HaMashiach, as he was there on that stake, his accusers, we accuse him. That was us that put the stripes upon his back. But yet, he didn't say one word. He could have spoken, and the Maliki would have come from the Shemayims to deliver him, but he did not. He held his shalom, Yisrael we speak, we say things when it's best for us just to hold our shalom and just allow Almighty Yahweh to fight our battles. The enemy, he comes in just as a roaring lion to devour and to consume. But it's not by the words of our contempt, Yisrael. 
as by waiting patiently, just as Dawi, he said, he was as a deaf man. He opened not his mouth. He said, thus I was as a man that heareth not. And in those, in whose mouth there is no reproof. For in you, O Yahweh, in you, O Yahweh, do I have hafiz. He said, I put my trust in you. I have imuna, that you will answer, that you will come to my rescue. Despite what the enemy says, or whatever paths that I have to overcome on every mountain. He said, Yahweh, in verse 16, in verse 15, he said, for in you, O Yahweh, do I have my imuna, my, my imuna, my faith, yes. my trust, that you will what? He said that you will hear me. Yes. Do we believe Yahweh hears? Yes, I do. As we heard as I came, as he preached unto us and spoke unto us the words of life, yes. that his ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. His arm is not short that he cannot save us, Yisrael, his Yasha. Neither does he sleep. He slumbers not, Yisrael. He said, for I said, in verse 16, he said, hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice, the enemy should rejoice over me when my foot slippeth. He said, they magnify themselves against me. They mock. Where is your Abba? Where is this mighty one that you speak of? You slip and you have fallen. He said, for I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me, almighty Yahweh. He says this in verse 18. For I will declare, he said, I will declare, I will make known my iniquity. We must make known our iniquity, Israel. It's easy to point out the iniquity of those that are against almighty Yahweh. But yet, we don't find ourselves being against him, walking away from his Torah, and not doing as he has commanded us. He said, for I will declare my iniquity, and I will be sorrowful for what? My sins. My sins. We could go throughout the day, and we very seldom think about our sins. We don't think about our shortcomings. Yet when it comes to our, our, our whole king and what's going on in the world, our eyes are so vigilant and, and visual. But yet when it comes down to myself and what I have done and why I have fallen short, I have fallen short. Yes. It's only because of Yahshua HaMashiach that I'm able to meet the mark. Yes. He said, I will be sorrowful for my sin, but my enemies, they are lively and they are strong. And they that hate me, wrongfully, they are multiplied. He said, they also that render evil for tough. He said, they are my adversaries. Because I follow the things that are tough. We must follow the things that are tough, Israel. No matter what the situation may seem, it is better to go that way than this way. There's only one way we should go. And that is according to what Torah expresses unto us. There's only one way. There's only one truth, Yisrael. There's only one light. And in that light, we should walk therein. He said, they are against me. They are my adversary because I follow the thing that is tough. He says unto Yahweh, forsake me not, O Yahweh, my Abba. Be not far from me. Do you want Yahweh to be far from us? Are we not under his shadow? Are we not close? Is he not close unto us, Yisrael? If we just look around, we'll see how his hasid, his ahava, it surrounds us because we are under his wing. He protects us, Yisrael. He said, forsake me not, O Yahweh, my Abba, neither be far from me. He said, to make haste to help me, O Yahweh, my Yasha. He said, you are my salvation. You are my Yasha. You are there to deliver me. You are there to keep me. You are there to uphold my hand. Hallelujah. And I brought Yahweh for that, that he is there. Yahshua, he is there. He never forsakes us. He never leaves us, as the world would say, leaves us hanging, Yisrael. But he is always there. 
if we would just call unto him. Hallelujah. This is not a beautiful day, Israel, y'all. Even though it has rained, Yahweh has rained upon us. His has, his ahava. We need rain here. The dryness, things become parched. You see the leaves of the plants, they start to wither and fold. Why? Because they're trying to reserve that water. They're trying to make do at the situations that are present. But yet we'll look around even after a rain like this in the garden. If you even look at the grass, you'll notice that the grass stands up, the leaves, they open. That's how we should be. Torah speaks about we should be as a watered garden. We should not look all dry and withered away. But he said as a watered garden. There's a difference between one that is watered and one that is not watered, Israel. You can see the difference. There's no ahava, there's no joy, there's no excitement, there's no praise. One that is parched. But yet if we allow this living water, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, to fill our nephesh, Yisrael, that you will see the excitement upon the faces. We'll look full, whole. We'll even open up our mouths and lift our hands unto Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because of all the things he has done for us. So let us not forget him, Yisrael, this day. Let us not cause our minds to be resorted to the things of the world, that we forget Almighty Yahweh. Because he's an ever-present help in a time of need. All we have to do is just ask. We don't know how to ask. Knock, and the door shall be open. Ask, and it shall be given. We should seek Yisrael, and then he will be found of us. He's always present. He is always near. So we told him for his Ahava, for his Hussets, for waking us up this morning. Allowing the movement of our limbs, even though we may ache here, there's a little pain there, but yet we told the Yahweh for the pain. We told the Yahweh for the, the discomfort at many times. Hallelujah. In all things we give Yahweh toda. All things we give him toda. So at this time, Israel, y'all, let us stand to our feet. Those that listen by via live stream, it's a Hallelujah. wonderful thing to have our Zakane here with us today, Johnston, his Ishaw. At that fellowship, we have broke the bread of Hail of life. Yes. Hallelujah. So let us leave from here full and content before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we will rock you for all things. We told you for sending your messenger. Hear Abba Yahweh to fill us, Yahweh, with the Leshem, the bread of life, Abba Yahweh. We told you for the safe traveling of the conditions that are here with us, our Ab Micaiah, his Israel, the family here, Yisrael Yah, with us today, Abba Yahweh. Those that have come to visit us, Abba Yahweh, told you for their, their presence, just being here, just knowing, Abba Yahweh, that Yisrael, that are scattered abroad, that there are those that are hearing even today. And the last have been lifted, Abba Yahweh. We told you for that. And for all things, we ask that those that have to travel, have to go out, Abba Yahweh, that your Melech King will be encamped around Kol Yisrael, Yah, and that your Torah will be encamped around our minds, just as the hedge that was about Eob, Abba Yahweh. For all things we do told you, we give you praise. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Shabbat shalom, Ko Yisrael, Yahweh Barak you all. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah.